Welcome back, people of the internet. Just a brief look. Um, got our goods, but we also have to fix our exhaust. I don't know, I was pointing over the other place, but um, I had my first shot at making pie cuts of some description. Now I won't lie, kind of janky, kind of out of place. However, for the most part, I am using two different types of, two different um, pipe diameters, slightly different, which is why it does look a little bit off. Um, but it's kind of what I have. Don't want to spend too much money. It's just a J-pipe. It's getting hidden above the um, rear muffler, so you're not going to be able to see it unless you take the whole exhaust off pretty much. Ooh, please don't shift too much. Basically, our exhaust, um, when it warms up, not so much cold, but after about an hour of driving, um, the drone gets horrific. It gets really bad um, inside the cabin. And so basically, I'm trying to reduce that. Um, I'm not too much of a scientific engineering whiz when it comes to this. Um, so I googled a few things. I, go uh, I googled um, and kind of did my research around it and kind of an idea. I may not get it perfect the first time, um, but if it reduces the drone, um, at least by 10-15%, I suppose that's a win by me. I've done um, the small calculations you need to to try and figure out what length you need, and um, you want to have lower than two and a half inch. Anything bigger than two and a half inch um, for your J-pipe isn't really going to um, do as an efficient as a job, apparently. That's just what I've read. So, um, yeah, just basically going to tack up this pipe now and also tack up a plug for our intake that we've bought. So a bit of a change of um, subject to finish that little J-pipe section. I'll show you more shortly. But I'll just do this quickly since it's a quick little job. And I finally have my fitting um, to go into the current setup that I have. And, and stock setup. It goes into stock as well. It isn't quite angled. So you might have to um, turn the intake a little bit or um, as you need. However, I also had to make a block off plate since mine doesn't have AC, ASC. Um, none of that comes. I don't, I don't have that. I got no traction control buoy. That's what I want. And so I made a plug and I welded the underside of it as you saw before so I could stick it in the intake. Um, and now that's the result of that. So yeah, let's put it in the car. Pretty simple. Three tools. Let's go. To be fair with you, the intake boot that um, Mishimoto makes for these cars probably a little bit bigger um, than what it needs to be. I had to trim it down about 10 mil on the MAF side of the intake boot. Um, but other than that, um, it went in relatively all right. Um, was quite rough, like tough, like it's very stiff, so it's a bit hard to kind of get everything on there. But um, yeah, once it's on, it's quite snug. It's nice. And check your fluid. Checking your fluid keeps your car on the road, that's for sure. Exactly what we want. So with these cars, I like to um, put 7 quarts plus whatever fills the Venos and oil filter. Because the oil filter on these cars are way up high and the vanilla system is what controls the variable cam timing for these cars. They would both require quite a bit of oil. So um, I like to um, run the engine usually and then know that it's at 
full. A little bit more oil than it says. Um, especially when you're using these cars for track and stuff. Um, they don't mind the little extra. The reason why we changed from this fitting to that stainless um, fitting, which was because that was actually 18 millimeters at a diameter. This is 22, 21 BMW from factory. Not sure why, even though the stock hose reads as 17 and the hose from factory or from the ICB reads 17, they are stretched onto a 21. Like that's really aggressive. So no, I just got a slightly different fitting to fit all my new, nice new um, hoses and stuff. As for the hose, I, oh, whoops. As for the hose for the ICV, what I did, you won't be able to see it, but I actually like, eh. I'll try and get it for you guys. You can see it goes into another up here. Oops, yeah, that one. Is because um, the hose from the factory is like, is an inch um, into the ICV, yeah, idle control valve. It's an inch in, in the diameter. And the hose that goes into the intake boot is 5 eighths, 17, 18 mil. So it's really weird why they've done that and just didn't make the ICV one, I don't know, it's just a stupid cockamamic thing. So I've tried to make it more reliable using a stainless fitting and replacing this boot because this boot really isn't that bad, but there are small and micro cracks between the ribs here. It'd be a bit hard to show on camera, but um, the idea is to slightly better intake maybe and reliable. So thumbs up. That's what the video is about. That's what this car's about. I don't know. Hey, say my dudes a little bit but today is a windy day today lots of work to be done but essentially I'll just show you a so as you may be able to see one side isn't looking too normal a little event I had hit a big pothole and basically it impacted the bottom of the tire, it was pretty deep and forced this to bend so we've got to replace this and teething issues that bolt has disappeared went easy on the brakes and yeah so now I'm gonna probably put Loctite on all these bolts so that does not happen again and and unfortunately our clutch is slipping like a Excuse the language, but we have a clutch job to do. Hooray! That means doing all the other things with it, which means we're going to be having all that work, plus fixing our exhaust, plus our transmission. So let's just get into it. So, got our rear discs off, whatever you want to call them, rear discs, um, to get machined and new pads um, as they don't look too healthy. Um, so, yeah, that's been done. But now we are on to the exhaust. So, I had found a better spot for this J pipe resonator to actually sit. I'd ended up finding a spot next to. The 90 that I made um, right beneath the transmission and there's an, a nice little two inch um, that I had left over I was able to use and recycle to send up next to the main exhaust and um, yeah it works out better than I thought so um, if I do ever have to rebuild the headers um, uh, it, it's connected to the headers which is the ugliest part so it'd just be a matter of well putting a new J pipe kind of in the same location just um be look a bit nicer with the headers so um that'd be the plan as this would be my kind of like prototype um just refining what i need because the rest of the exhaust i'm pretty happy with you know resin um just like maybe not as a tinny sound you know
Sounds a bit tinny with these headers at the moment. Under there, and so I want you to raise it just a little bit if you can. Okay. And so I'll show you. You can see under if you look underneath, mm. you can see the mounts are close to the car. See those mounts moving? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to move them kind of similar up to there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and wiggle it out on with the jack supported on it. I just need you to like. T I just need you to lower it. This is what I tell you to bring it out front. Okay. So, my dudes, we took the flywheel and everything out. And as you can see, she's pretty cooked. She is really cooked. But it's not like I wasn't expecting this. This clutch had been in the car for over 200,000 Ks. So it was bound to go soon. Um, the pressure plate, oh my God. The, the groove, there's an indent groove there. You can feel it, you can see it as well there. Not so much there. There's a groove there. More grooves there. Man, she's pretty fried, eh? As for the flywheel, yeah, we definitely need to get it machined. There's grooves everywhere. So, we need to get it machined. So yeah, that's about it for now, I guess. Um, yeah, gotta clean up, gotta do other things, but I'll be back and I'll sort, I don't know what to do next. So we'll figure something out. So my dudes, another morning, another day. And today, what the plan is, is I'd like to finish up this exhaust for the most part and I would like to get the power steering line um, finished um, for, and then while we're waiting for all those other parts to arrive because that's pretty much um, all we can do quite at this stage and if you can guess what kind of welding this is I recently, it's rough, don't get me wrong, it's rough I know, okay she's a ruffian but I'm trying to learn TIG. I've got myself a little TIG gun finally, kind of learning to do that. Um, yes, I do have the wrong gas for this, but for learning purposes and don't have much that much that much gas left, so just we'll use this. We might switch to argon um, a bit later, but for learning purposes, it seems to be doing okay. So we're just gonna try and learn with this. So yeah, let's do it. Good. So my dudes, next little project is doing the transmission stuff. Um, I'm getting a new seal for the shifter part and I want to get a new seal for the input shaft. Um, our transmission also, it's hard to see. I'll try and stabilize the camera, but mm, there's a lot of play. <laughs> yes, this, this box has been Close to, it's the original box, so it's probably had close to around 400,000 kilometers on it. Uh, um, and as for yesterday, I was getting really frustrated and stuff, so I just didn't record a lot of it. Um, yes, I have the wrong, wrong to gas. The welds are not too pretty. 
I just plugged the hole with some MIG there. But it looks worse on camera to be honest. But I'm getting there with the TIG. Obviously I'll use um, fresh Dano last time, but as for matters of practice, I was just kind of using it for that. And um, got this little bracket welded off as well. So that the J part, yeah. Cause I accidentally, um, this is probably a little higher up into the tunnel than I would like it to be. So it's probably gonna um, fit, um, what's the word? It's probably gonna hit on the, um, heat shield a little bit. Uh, I've already hammered a little bit out. I might, ha might need to hammer more, um, but we'll see how we go with that once the transmission is back in. Now onto the transmission. I've been working at getting this little seal out and how I was able to get it, it's almost out, was put a little hole in the seal itself. And then I'm kind of using the screwdriver to kind of heave it out and you're about to so boys and girls, as you can see, may be able to see, up there is my oil filter housing. And that's the banjo fitting. That's the housing itself right in the center there. The black little bit is the fitting. Unfortunately, this actually is why we're buying the new, not buying, we're placing the 52 filter for the 50 filter housing is because these filter housings are quite unreliable and well I think I know what's putting oil everywhere now is it is literally oh, it's hard to see on camera but it goes along the side of the sump goes down all the way and it goes back onto the transmission and everything. Everything's pretty oily. And um, yeah, it's BMWs for you. This is our bad boy part. We've cleaned it up already for the most part. We do have to clean it up once more. But I thought I'd put a V8 in the car. So, there's your V8 spot boys. Um, but, yoink, yoink, what's this, oh yeah, that's our new Vanos line because our other one's leaking, and we have all of our AN goodies for our filter stuff, don't need that, but still, yes, yes, um, Well, there we go. Here's one that's come off properly. I'll do you guys upside down because in Australia, we're the opposite way around, apparently, according to our maps. But, you know. No. Look at that. Beautiful. Upside down, wrong way around. That's how Australia is compared to the rest of the world. So now we've had a little bit of fun with our stickers. It's time to get our hands dirty and oily with the front part of the engine bay. So taking the auxiliary part of the car apart is relatively simple. Just take the airbox out, then the alternator little cooler thing. Um, then push the pulley. Um, Idler push it, idler tension up pulley to loosen the belt, get the belt off, and then it's just a matter of two bolts, two wires for the alternator, and for the power steering, um, the banjo fitting, a hose clamp, and two bolts. Our filter housing is out, power steering is out for now. I have cleaned it up a little bit, it does look a little better on camera, in person, it looks horrific. Um, and it was worse before the oil and everything everywhere. The previous person had put RTV on along with the gasket, which is like, bruh. But anyway, um, cleaned all that up. 
everything's pretty much ready to swap in our little housing over there, our new one. Except only thing is we are waiting on parts now, so yay. So while parts are on the way, I start making our return line for our power steering. I decided not to make the um, feed line either pressure line, because that's an extremely high pressure line, like 1400 PSI. Um, I think I could be wrong with that, but I just know it's probably not reasonable as me to just make A in line out of it. It's, I think it's a little far stretched. Uh, maybe people have done it. I prefer not to the in these cars because these cars, um, their power steering racks require a lot of pressure and push a lot of pressure. Um, so that's why I basically just want to be safe and sorry really at this stage. Right, so as for our little power steering line, I think she fits up quite nicely. She goes up to our little reservoir up there pretty well, comes along. She's P-clipped right there, and as you can see, just goes over there into the other side of the rack. Go to the other side and show you. And voila, just like that. Yeah, this is the return line, it's not the um, feed line, which is why I'm kind of confident in using AN for it. I'm a little bit scared for the pressure line. Let me move this just for the moment. No. So you can see that the old one does a little twist and twirl and, you know, it's basically made out of metal. Um, basically, it's meant to cool the fluid as it goes to. You know, it's um, not the most efficient cooler in the world, BMW but it is a cooler nonetheless. But because it's so crap, I'm pretty confident for daily driving, um, the new one shouldn't be, um, shouldn't cause too many issues. If it does, I might have to introduce a small um, cooler in the future, mounted somewhere underneath the car, not too sure yet. Um, basically go test it, find out. And if it's not happy, well, put a cooler on it really. Um, and as for our old filter housing, you can see here, I've already stripped our um, sensor off. But compared to the alloy housing, there's a little valve thing here that um, don't come on the M50 versions of these, the aluminium caps. Basically, apparently, I've gotten to um, research results as to what this does. Some people say it's a oil pressure relief valve. Some others say it's a um, valve that keeps oil in the filter housing um, for dry start. So when you turn the car off, it keeps a little bit in here, so it prevents your car from um, dry starting, really, if, it has, if it's sat for a little while. Um, so yeah, I'm not too worried about that because M50s are pretty damn reliable as well. It's not like, to be honest with you, these things um, have problems with their pressed in little, um, bung cap things, these get pressed in on M52s, on M50s they get threaded and um, bolted on, so it's a lot more reliable, these start to leak and stuff once you hit high mileage like I am on this car, and so yeah, we're just changing that over as well, but as for our power steering line, we um, should, should not have any problems, I don't think, it's purely because it isn't a very efficient cooler, and our, and our line's pretty short as well. So I think we might be okay with that, I hope so. And with our transmission, I've actually gone ahead and I've substituted a lot of the old bolts for, unironically, un Subaru bolts. Um, these two here for the starter are from BMW, it's from the, um, from the rear diff. Um, and they're the same third, everything, same length. I've made sure everything is the same length, et cetera, et cetera, not to bottom out anything or damage anything. Just got to look for top two, bolts as well as these two that come over here go to the bolt shop and get some 8.8 um, .8 grade bolts that I have a hex head because these e torques to be honest with you I can get it and I can tighten them and I can loosen them but I just don't have um, the range of tools to make it easy and comfortable so I'm just swapping them out while I'm here so in the future if I do have to do another clutch I'm a little bit more um, because of the tooling I have. I don't really have e-talk stuff 
I've got all um, hex stuff, so prep for that. So I put water and compressed air through it, and I'm just hanging it up to dry for the moment. Get any, just did that to get any gunk out of it when I cut it with the grinder and all sorts of other stuff, test fitting it, etc. And I've put the banjo back in the rack just to close it off somewhat so that nothing gets in the rack and stuff and we're all good there. Um, but now, I couldn't do this yesterday because I didn't have the O-ring kit here, but my father brought it home, which was very nice of him, from work. So, this has all been pretty much cleaned up, compressed air, it's pretty much ready to go. I'll give it another shot of compressed air in the future, but in, it's just sitting here for the meantime. But there's a small O-ring in here that we've got to replace, and I'll show you guys that. Take this out, put this back on the rack because I don't need it. This is our oil pressure sensor from the other sensor. From the looks of, right, looks of it, it looks like the exact same sensor. So I don't think I have to swap it out. I'm just going to leave it. Um, and hope for, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'll just swap it. It's the truth, really. Okay, so as you can see, there's a tiny little O-ring on here. Got to replace that. It's pretty hard um, from what I felt. So always check these things when you get second hand parts and stuff and replace everything you can because I for sure do not want premature failure of my engine. It's already gone for 400,000. I think it can go for another 400,000. Okay. So we got our arms out ones here. The ones on the bench, but basically to get these trailing arm bolts out, ooh, you've got to get it out from there. And to do that, it hits on the diff, so you've got to unbolt the three bolts that hold the diff, unfortunately, um, which does make it a bit annoying. And because I have poly bushings, I have to do all three, I can't just do the front or the rear, but that's all right. You guys want to see. Mr. Damaged. Here's Mr. Damaged. She was properly damaged. <laughs> so, um, everything else looks good on the arm. Just this front part, which I'm happy about, because that means I can kind of reuse the rest of this arm. And more parts. Not more parts, but got our flywheel machine. Very nice, very happy. Got all our rotors machined, very nice, very happy. Um, we've got our shifter shaft seal in there, got to install the front one still, and we'll be doing that as well. So yeah, let's get into it. I soon found out that doing this was just um, a waste of time, since um, you can only put them in the car like physically when they're at their shortest these arms and then how the arms work is once you've installed them that's when you can extend them to the size you want i tried pre um like finding the length and everything that i wanted and it just um made it a lot harder when i should have just at the beginning left them how they were installed them and then um extended them out to length as it was much easier that way So as you can see, got everything on. I haven't recorded me doing much um, simply because, you know, I'm really not in the mood to try and make scenes and all that stuff. So I'm just showing you the after the results. Um, new pads on the front, not new rotors, but all the rotors are machined now. As for the transmission, we move over here. So we said we were going to change these bolts out. Well, on two spots, we did have to um, grind away um, material to try and fit sockets on. We've done it here. It, it looks more than it is. You just had to do a little bit to fit the 18mm socket on it. And do it here. This side's probably a little bit cleaner. But yeah, that's it. Just to have easier bolt access, because the last thing I want to do is kind of use the e-torques 
things again. That's the one thing BMW didn't do good. Those bolts are pretty crap, to be fair with you. Um, and yeah, well, we're just kind of at this stage now. Poor car. That's all right. Exhaust is hanging, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes. And so, my dudes, we have all of our parts delivered to finish our kind of little half rebuild of the car. We have a rear main, we have a pilot bearing, we have our oil filter housing gasket, we've got our rear main plate gasket thing, you'll see when I do it. And we also have our shifter linkage thing, I don't know what to call it, power steering hose feed, power steering reservoir, as they come with a new filter, so you'll get a new one, replace the filter in it basically. That's how you service your power steering, supposedly, according to me. I don't know, but have a clutch. I have already looked at it. This does fit. We have a plate. We have our throw, throw out bearing. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm pretty excited. I think we'll start with the top of the car, which means we'll start with this this kind of this because it's out of the car already and this these three are for the rear of the car pilot bearing and all sorts of stuff so let's get into it the entire front end has been fully assembled again got everything tightened up and redone. Unfortunately, Trace Bay's, their um, Vanos line isn't the friendliest hose in the world. So I had to take off the fil filter housing again, um, finger tight the Vanos line, and then I had to kind of put the filter housing back on. Um, so that was really annoying, to be honest. As for the M50, S50 filter housings, alternator, you do have to change the bolt up here, probably to get a longer bolt and not M10 by 1.5. Um, you gotta get a longer bolt. The stock bolt that comes with the M52 does not fit here. As for the bottom one, the longer bolt um, that goes here, I th here I think, no, no, down there, bolt straight um, into the bottom one, same. As for our power steering pump, compared to the M52 housing, the, I'll just show you. So these are the two spots where the power steering pump bolts on. For the M50 S50 filter housing, this is actually like shorter, this whole piece. So um, I'll have to get some spaces machined up um, to correctly mount this on to the M50 or an M50 power steering pump. However, for the moment, I've got some washers and it's all lined up, dead straight, everything. Um, I prefer not to use washers to do that sort of thing, but um, in, I'll, we'll be sure to replace that in the future because that's a little bit dodgy, but it will work for the meantime. New power steering stuff on. New power steering line on. It's a bit hard to see behind the sway bar. Our Aeon. And um, yeah, basically time to put that thing in. We have already removed and replaced our pilot bearing. That's what that kit was for. I did have to grind the kit tool a little bit. Just to hammer it through the power steering, not the power steering, hammer it through the pilot bearing. But now I can't get it out, so um, we might have to destroy the bearing later. I'll, I'll decide that later. Um, as for our seals and everything, um, it's a bit hard to show you because I'm under the car and everything. But it comes with a little bushing kit, little white plastic thing if you get an, um, an OE manufactured um, replacement. And pretty straightforward, put a little bit of RTV at both sides. I'll show you underneath the car if I can. So taking this plate off when installing the rear main seal I put this in between it as well to install the seal correctly on this little aluminium plate and then once we're putting it onto the crankshaft, car engine, whatever a um, little bit of RTV at both of these corners there and have this on there to guide the seal so it doesn't flip or anything you know so it's all going well it looks all good and um yeah ready to put this transmission back on so my dudes we got the transmission back in 
on the engine fully installed with the shift beneath everything just need to do slave and the electrical plus now the rear end and the exhaust so it's getting there um yesterday was pretty exhausting so let's finish it the headers to main pipe set up i would like to rebuild this in the future however for now we're fixing it with the TIG gas, not TIG gas, with our gas that we used for TIG, it's actually meant to be used for MIG, and there's a few cracks. So, I mean, I'm, there's a crack there, and there's another crack here. And I'm just gonna go over these welds with the MIG, because, I mean, yeah, using the wrong gas with TIG can cause cracking in the material, and I'd rather just seal it up now. It was good practice, but... Subaru, it was horrific, so hopefully we have done good this time, I hope. So I made sure before I started up the car, because the filter housing had been off and there'd be no um, oil through the engine for a little while, I made sure to take out the fuse for the fuel pump and crank over the engine quite a number of times to get oil pressure back in our um, top half of the engine and at least um, keep it from dry starting. And then I've let it run um, while I'm putting the tires back on and stuff just to make sure that there's no leaks or anything. I don't know, this episode was a weird episode. I'll, uh, I'll be honest. Uh, I just, all over the place, getting in the car, making things. I don't know, it was a little messy, but I think, I, I don't know, hey, I don't know, but M50 housing on, new power steering line on, all good in the hood there, it seems, um, and yeah, it seems like the car is getting closer to where we need it to be for our event in June, we've got an event coming up in June and stuff, and so um, probably next episode will be a prep video, like fixing um, one of the arms I broke to have some spare parts and kind of see where um, you'd want where you'd want the car and what stuff you'd want to have for your first track day as well because it's also my first track day so I've got to do a lot of research and I think you guys would appreciate the knowledge and the time um, as well so yeah hope you guys enjoyed it and um I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.